Now, let's go back a number of years, Rob. Back to when we heard that there was going to be a Batman entering the DCEU. And the questions abounded about who's going to play Batman. And one name, definitely nobody guessed, was Ben Affleck. And then they announced Ben Affleck and the whole world laughed at it. And I remember, Rob, me and John Schnepp, the day they announced Ben Affleck, John Schnepp and I, we got on a live stream that day, like literally within about 20 minutes of the announcement. And we told the world, you wait. He's going to be a great Batman. This is a great choice. Everybody can laugh right now, but they won't be laughing later because he's going to be a great Batman. And the fact of the matter is, he was a great Batman. In my opinion, my favorite Batman so far. And even a lot of people who didn't like Batman versus Superman and didn't like those movies, even a lot of those people really like Ben Affleck as Batman. But we have found out, like, obviously with any role, Rob, there's going to be other people in the running. One of the people who I didn't realize was in the running is now coming out and talking about a little bit, but a guy that was very close to getting the role, and, and it came down, I believe, to between him and Ben Affleck, was Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin was up there to be their pick for this role, and I had no idea about that. Now, when you understand, this instantly made sense to me. When you understand that their goal was they were going for what Zack Snyder wanted was a more seasoned veteran and, and gritty, maybe a bit jaded Batman. Brolin would have been a really good pick. Now, this comes to us from CNN. They wrote the following. Josh Brolin says that he would have been an older and more raspy Batman than Ben Affleck. During a recent uh, conversation on the podcast, Happy, Sad, Confused, which they do a lot of really good stuff, uh, Brolin said that he lost out on playing the Dark Knight to Ben Affleck. Director Zack Snyder went with Affleck as Batman in 2016's Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Affleck also played the role in Snyder's Justice League film the following year. That was his decision. That wasn't my decision, Brolin said of Zack Snyder's pick. Uh, that would have been a fun deal, Brolin said of playing Batman. And maybe uh, I'll do it when I'm 80. Uh, he has done all right for himself, though, recently, of course, appearing in the film Dune. And, of course, he played that little MCU villain, Thanos. And Cable. And he played Cable. So he's been doing all right in the he's comic book. He's got old Josh Brolin. He's and now he's got right. some sci-fi western. Yeah, what's TV? Name Outer Rachel, Range, man. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but I've had a bunch of people writing into me and talking to me about I, it. I, 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 apparently, it's two episodes out. So I can't wait to see. It. I've always, I mean, dude, he goes all the way back to the Goonies. No, he does. A, he's much younger, Josh Brolin, back in the Goonies. But I'll tell you what. Sometimes we look at these could have been castings, and we go like, "Whoo! Thank goodness!" Like because we got who we got. And again, Ben Affleck is my favorite Batman, but. This would have been a really cool Batman, too. Josh Brolin playing that role you could, also would have been great. What do you think about all this and the fact that he lost out on it? Well, you know, I mean, I could see Josh Brolin. They could have done a live-action Dark Knight Returns. He would have been awesome. He would have been needed to be a little older. Well, no, he would have. He could have started out, you know, and, and age up a little right, bit in the right. role and then come back because he's got that Dark Knight Returns jaw. Um, I like the idea. I like I like I like Josh Brolin. I mean, dude, he's so good in Sicario, and uh, he's such a badass. And I've I've really enjoyed his personas. Yeah, he had a little little rough patch there, you know, but uh, I really like where he's at now, and I'm a huge fan of his. And I think, look, man, I mean, even though he's a purple giant CGI titan, you still see Z uh, uh, Josh Brolin's face in Thanos. Yes, and he was great. He was great as Cable. I mean, I'm a huge fan, and I think he would have been a great Batman. Now, that's not to say Ben Affleck wasn't, but if he, he absolutely had, was, yeah. yeah, and if he had been in that role, I think he would have been even more brutal and more, as he said, raspy, and it would have worked great. But I'm kind of glad, you know, I don't know if if him and Henry Cavill would have looked as like I loved seeing Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck meet at Lex Luthor's party. In Batman v Superman, they kind of square off. Yep. Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent. I love bringing people together. <laughs> you know, whatever. I love that scene. I don't know if Josh Brolin would have been the best foil for Cavill's Kal El, but I it all worked out great. You know, uh, another thing he could have been really great for would be he would have been a great Thomas Wayne. Like when if you look at totally, the Flash, dude, Flashpoint story, like. What happens if Bruce died in the alley, but the dad lived and that dad was 
Thomas Wayne, who went on become to become the Avenging Knight, like he he could have fit in pretty well. That with would that, have been right? badass, dude. I would have liked that as well. Yeah. It, anyway, it guys, good. question is for you. Josh Brolin's talking about man. Hey, listen, that wasn't my decision not to be Batman. That was Zack Snyder's decision. I'm glad it went to Ben Affleck, but I mean, I think Josh Brolin would have been a really interesting Batman as yeah. well. What do you guys think? Do you kind of wish he had been it? Do you think he would have been all right as it? Do you think they made the right decision? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. Guys, we want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. You know the one with the delightful ads with good Canadian kid Ryan Reynolds? So look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. And guys, that's no joke because for years I've been using one of the major providers and it was fine. But I switched over to Mint Mobile a little while ago. The service has been fantastic. And the big difference is I'm now paying about one third of what I was paying before. And the best part for anybody who just hates their phone bills is that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia.